So in 4.4, we're going to talk about rational functions. And rational functions are simply a function that is the quotient of two polynomials. So what I have is I have some polynomial over another polynomial. So we're going to have a fraction with two polynomials. And we usually list it something like p of x over um, q of x. <laughs> That's a q, sorry. So it could look something like, you know, 3x over x minus 5. Those are both polynomials, right? Uh, first degree polynomial. So I have a first degree polynomial on the top and the first degree polynomial on the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is let's talk about domain. That's probably the most one of the um, important things about a polynomial function uh, or a rational function. I'm sorry. So in the domain, so uh, we have talked about this before. If we have a fraction, I don't have any square roots, so I don't have to worry about square roots um, for the domain. But I do have a fraction. So what do I want to be concerned about uh, whenever we have a fraction? Well, remember we can never have uh, zero in the denominator, right? This is really bad. No zeros in the denominator, right? Bad, bad, bad. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to set x minus 5 and I'm going to say that cannot equal zero. The whole denominator cannot equal zero. So x cannot equal 5. So this is my domain restriction. So that's my domain restriction. So don't forget, just set your uh, denominator equal to zero and then, or set it not equal to zero, and then tell me what x cannot be. Uh, sometimes um, you might have to factor out that denominator because I could have, you know, my denominator could be something like x squared uh, plus 3x minus 4, in which case I would have to factor it out to, what is that, x um, plus 4, x minus 1. So x cannot equal, I would say, x cannot equal positive 4 and x cannot equal positive, I'm sorry, negative 4 and cannot equal positive 1. So this is my domain restriction right here. Okay. Now this is also going to be used for something else. Uh, later in this chapter we're going to talk about asymptotes. So my vertical asymptotes are going to come from my domain restrictions. Okay. So we'll get to that later, but just remember there's actually two things that are going to come um, from that number negative 4 and positive 1. So the next thing I want to talk about are x-intercepts. So x-intercepts, this is where this graph is going to um, you know, cross the x-axis, just like always. So the x-intercepts, if I have a fraction, um, you know you want to set y equal to 0, right? So how does this whole fraction um, set equal to 0? Well, if you remember, um, if you think about it, if I have a fraction with 0 over anything, I don't care what's in the denominator, right? 0 over anything is just 0. So if you recall, all I need to do is set my numerator equal to 0 to find my x-intercepts. Because all I need to do is set this guy equal to 0, and then that will tell me where it crosses the x-axis. So I'm just going to have 3x plus 5 equal to 0. So 3x equals negative 5, and x equals negative 5 thirds. So my x-intercept is at negative 5 thirds. And let's talk about uh, where's my domain restriction. I'm going to call that my domain my uh, domain restriction. So x minus 2 cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal positive 2. So, so far we know how to find. We're going to set um, our denominator equal to 0 to find our domain restrictions and also the vertical asymptotes, which I, I will get to. And then I'm going to set the numerator equal to 0 to find my x-intercepts. Okay. So the last concept I want to talk about is the concept of an asymptote. So an asymptote, um, if you've been introduced to them before, is simply like this invisible wall. So it's this invisible um, line that, um, depending on what type of asymptote it is, it's going to have different rules. A vertical asymptote, the graph can never ever cross it. So I can have a I can have a function that perhaps is going to get very, very close to that asymptote. Maybe this is maybe what my um, rational expression looks like. But it is never going to cross that, ex that, um, excuse me, that vertical asymptote. So an expression, you know, I might have an expression that says um, x, or excuse me, 3 over um, x minus 4, where this is the number 4. 
because you know x cannot equal 4, right? You know that from your domain restrictions. So, and that is also um, similarly going to be my vertical asymptote. My vertical asymptotes come from my denominators. So that's pretty much just the introduction that I wanted to give you to this chapter. Um, know that there are going to be domain restrictions. Um, we can have x-intercepts, y-intercepts. We'll talk about finding those. Um, and then as well as asymptotes. So um, we'll talk about the rest of it in class.